CME Info's continuing education and board certification programs bring the conference to you. The following is a video sample from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine's Computed Body Tomography, The Cutting Edge. This excerpt is from course director, Dr. Elliot Fishman's lecture titled, Post-Processing CT Datasets, What You Need to Know. I think the advantage of having the coronals and the sagittals pre-processed for you, I think, is just human nature. It's much easier and much quicker for people to look at. I think when you need to play around with them, particularly when it's a slower workstation, I think people tend not to look at them. Once they're reconstructed, uh, they're there, there's a tendency to look at them. And I think it's almost like you really need to make that part of your workflow. I think just looking at the axial images these days, and I'll show you some of the references, um, it's just not going to be enough. And what I'll look at is sort of the different techniques and where I think um, they, they tend to have value. And as I said before, whether you're looking at iPads or laptops or any type of, uh, of the new processing, uh, everything is going to be available everywhere and much quicker. So that kind of is very nice. So what I'll do is I'll start with, with multiplanar since that's what most people uh, will use. How many people routinely do 3D post-processing in practice? So you see it's a small number of people. And um, so in about, we started doing 3D imaging about 1986. And I wrote this article, a very nice article. And I said within two or three years, it would be mainstream. So I, then I wrote that same article in 1991, 96, 2003. <laughs> I think I'm getting closer. OK, but multiplanar is something, uh, particularly once CT went to 64 slice and isotropic data sets, uh, isotropic data sets are obviously ideal. The same quality reconstructions, uh, whether you're looking at axial, coronal, or sagittal. And uh, in the old days, we used to get reimbursed for it. Now it's all part of the code. So just doing multiplanar is not really going to get you any more money. It does take a little bit more time. Uh, I think that's probably not always the case. I think particularly in complicated cases, it probably actually saves you some time because you start looking at the axials, trying to think about what exactly is going on. Sometimes you look at things in the coronal, things become very clear. So I think as long as your workstation allows you the uh, speed of looking at the data sets, I think there is no time penalty in doing post-processing. There was this one article published the other year which looked at uh, the use of coronal reformations, and they looked at it in the application of hepatoma, and they felt uh, that there was, uh, there was uh, people felt more confident. So reader confidence increased although there was no statistically significant improvement in sensitivity, positive predictive value, or diagnostic accuracy. And confidence, indeed, is very important. Uh, the comment was it came at the cost of longer interpretation times, and they were saying that uh, it increased the time of reading by a factor of about five minutes, which almost was double what uh, looking at the axials alone, but I think that's probably not the case. I think, you know, you can look at the coronal sagittals and axials in the same time you would look at axial imaging. So I think once you get some experience, it's not that more time consuming. In a case like this, I think it just shows uh, why it saves you time. You're looking at this case, patient with chest pain, back pain, looking for dissection. You see a dissection. You see this ulceration maybe here. It looks like an intramural hematoma, trying to figure exactly what's going on. You can look at all the axial imaging, but you can look at two coronal images and you really have the impression, there's the ulcer, there's the intramural hematoma, there's the dissection. You really get a better feel of what's going on, and you actually do it much faster, and your interpretation is typically more correct and more informative. Or looking at a simple case like this with a renal carcinoma, it's much easier to describe to the referring physician where the tumor is, the size, and also the vascularity than it would be in looking at the axial images and trying to build a model. The one thing, of course, we'll talk about what the limitations are with multiplanar. At the end of the day, multiplanar is still a flat image. It's kind of like a slice. It's like an axial slice, but in a coronal, or sagittal, or oblique plane. So you don't, you don't get the depth perception you would get from 3D imaging. So for example, in this case, the upper pole renal mass, you can see the vascularity, but when you put it in 3D, whether it's MIPA volume rendering, you really see the neovascularity better. So it's for the surgeon, particularly for the uh, angiographer, where they're trying to look and isolate vessels and determine maybe embolization or maybe partial nephrectomy characteristics or tumor aggressiveness, be it a uh, papillary versus a clear cell, the 3D map gives you that information. 
Or in a case like this where this patient had a stab wound, you can see hematoma in the pectoralis minor and major muscle, and you see active extravasation of contrast, you, and you see pulmonary contusion, you could put that in a coronal plane and you see the vessel injury, and you see the extravasation, but it's very hard to figure out exactly. You can kind of guesstimate where the bleeding is coming from, but if you took that same set of images and just put it in a MIP, you can see exactly where the bleed is coming from. So one of the key advantages of 3D imaging is this volume approach, seeing everything. Uh, key disadvantage of multiplanar is really, you're looking at slice by slice, you'll scroll through the volume, and again, put things in your mind, what you're dealing with, which at times like this, take away the bone, is just so much easier to see. Top quality board certification reviews and continuing education programs, guaranteed. For more information about this self-study activity, go to www.cmeinfo.com 764V or call us at 1-800-284-8433.